Chapter 4 While Damien was going to take Grayson's advice, he would not be caught baking by anyone else. So he had Grayson distract the others while he worked on the cookies. He had been lucky to remember her specific recipe because she had been very firm in the fact that none could be as good as her family's. So he spent four hours in the kitchen working on the cookies while Dick kept Alfred and the others away. Alfred knows because Alfred knows all. He ended up giving them all to Dick, who gave him a tight hug and raced upstairs with a plate. Damien decided to fall asleep early to see if he could make them before she got there. When Marinette popped into the dreamscape, she saw Damien taking the cookies out of the oven and bolted over to him for a hug. He almost stumbled backwards as she was launched onto him and wrapped her arms around his waist. Damien, I missed you! He laughed. Have BT. It's only been one day. She was about to give a snarky response when the nickname registered. Hubby BT. Didn't that mean beloved? Marinette looked at him with her lips in an O and a slight blush. Hubby BT. Damien's face went red, time to deflect. Anyway, I made these for you, to thank you. She noticed what he was doing, but decided to ignore it for the time being. Maybe she could call him some of the things she did in her head. What for, mon petit chou? For stress baking, although I hate that name. One of my brothers found out, but he's keeping quiet for now. She grabbed one off the tray and bit into it. Birdie, these taste amazing. How did you do so well? No offense, but you were not this good before. The conversation continues as they walked over to the sparring mats, and she began to fill him in on her first day of school after the summer. As she dodged a kick, she told him about a new friend named Alia, and his brain stopped working as his body moved on autopilot. Did she just call him her sweet bun a few minutes ago, and he didn't notice? Was he blushing now? How is she doing that? If she can do it to me, maybe I can do it to her. He tuned back in. Apparently some new kid put gum in that Nino kid's chair, and she put him in his place until he apologized. Good. He gave me his umbrella, which was sweet, I guess. I'm sure it was, Angel. He opened her mouth to retort, but then turned red as a ladybug. Get it. And it snapped her jaw shut. She went still. What? I said, I'm sure it was, Angel. He said the last word with a smirk and moved in for a quick jab. Marinette finally realized what he was doing and glared at him as she dodged the strike. He merely gave her an innocent smile and tried to continue the match. And then what happened? How dare he? She taught him that smile. He couldn't use it on her. Damien! What? You can't just call me Angel or Beloved and act like you're all innocent. He crossed his arms and gave a mock glare. And you can't just call me your sweet bun. I am not sweet. Her expression slowly morphed into something teasing. You are sweet. I most certainly am not. Then what do you call spending four hours today trying to make me my favorite treats and bribing your brother to go along with it? A thank you. Fine. He wanted to be stubborn. Time to test her theory. She leaned over to him and kissed his cheek. His whole body turned a slight pink and his eyes glazed over as he put a hand to his cheek. She mentally pumped her fist. Yes, he liked her too. Hold up. Was he even breathing? Could he die of strangulation in, dr in the dreamscape? Would he just wake up? Merde, he was turning purple. She thumped him on the back, and he coughed twice to get the air back in his lungs. What? What was that for? To test the theory, Damien. Do you have a crush on me? What? No. Anyways, what happened after school? For a moment, she considered telling him about Tiki and the Kuma thing, but decided to keep the secret a secret for now, even as guilt flooded her. But then she remembered how he couldn't tell her some things. That made the guilt recede. Right. She wanted to finally tell him. Shame, because I do. He almost tripped over his feet. She had a what on him? What? He croaked out. She walked over to him and crossed her arms, somehow controlling her blush. What was she doing? I said... I have a crush on you. Damien was blue screening. Was she flirting with him? For how long? Was this flirting? Marinette had been trying to teach him the more normal things, but she had never covered flirting. Mother certainly didn't do it like this, but then again, Marinette was an assassin. Wait, she was talking again? And I understand completely that you might not like me you like that, but I was just telling you and... But she stopped and put her head in her hands, peeking up at him with one eye. Answer her! I do care for you like that, Marinette. What does this mean? She squealed. You do? 
Then maybe we're romantic soulmates. I was hoping for so long, and now I was right. He stepped over and gave her a hug. A somewhat stiff hug, but a hug nonetheless. Maybe it would be prudent if we traded cell phone numbers. That way we can talk throughout the day and not just here. How did I not think of that? Also, you're getting much better at hugs, Damien. He stepped back and she grabbed her sketchbook and tore out a piece. You write yours and I'll write mine. We can memorize them. Good thinking. They did so, and she had a beatific smile the next day. Chloe shivered when she saw it. Thank you for listening to this chapter of The Sword in the Sweets. All the chapters are on my channel and on AO3, as you probably know. I would like to reiterate, I did not help create this. I did not help write it. I have done nothing but read it. All of the credit goes to My Old Works, The Fair Maiden of Fandom. I hope you enjoyed.